So here's a broken record for you. When you're teaching your kids to communicate and to write, it doesn't matter what they're writing. It doesn't matter if it's an essay, a poem, a creative story, a, a research paper, a thesis project, a book, doesn't matter. Teach your kids this core lesson that communication is the, the goal, the result. And in order to be an effective communicator, are you ready? You need to know your audience. Who is that piece of writing, that piece of communication for? Is it for them? Is it for you, their teacher? Is it for brothers and sisters? Is it for a professor, an employer? Once you know the community or once you know the audience, then you tailor the language to that audience. So if my son is going to write a story, but it's for his own enjoyment. He's going to use very different language than if he were to write it for the four-year-old next door neighbor. Does that make sense? So number one, know your audience. Number two, recognize that all communication should be targeted to, targeted for a 13-year-old vocabulary. Why? Most people use the vocabulary of a 13 year old. It's the common language. That does not mean that you shouldn't use specialized language or lofty language, but it does mean in communication. If you're going to use specialized vocabulary, you must explain it to your audience. You must define those terms. Every single discipline, every single subject has its own set a vocabulary. So if you're telling a story about a wizard, then you need to make sure that your audience understands all the magical terms. If you're writing a research paper about cardiology, you need to make sure that your audience understands all those scientific terms. So this is pro tip XYZ number 4.297. If you want to teach your kids to be excellent communicators, Help them identify the audience. Help them use language that most people understand, but help them also learn the skill of defining vocabulary that is specialized. And then the last thing, hey, Aunt Mary, and um, the last thing in teaching your kids to communicate after they identify their audience, after you have defined what that piece of writing is supposed to look like, what it's supposed to be, if it's a poem, it's a list. So they've got their audience, they have their specialized vocabulary, and then you simply then put it all together, right? You simply put it all together together. Writing and communication, writing and excellent communicating skills are something that is taught. But if you focus on the assignment, you must write an essay, or you must write a poem, or you must write a list of everything that you want to do before you kick the bucket. If you focus on the assignment, kids kind of, they short circuit. But instead, if you, if you focus on who the intended audience is and what the purpose of the writing is. So the purpose of an essay is to entertain or to inform or to argue a point. The purpose of a list is to organize thoughts and ideas. The purpose of a thesis project um, it <laughs> has a much grander scope. So understanding the purpose of why they're putting pencil to paper is the starting point. Then recognizing who gets to be on the other side of that, oh, that makes the assignment so much easier and gives it so much more value. And then learning that every single subject has a has its own set of vocabulary. You know, I went to have my car repaired one time and the mechanic told me that I could, I can't remember what the part was. I'm going to call it a catalytic converter because that sounds like a big word. And he used the term an OEM part. And so I said, forgive me, I don't have the same set of vocabulary as you. What is an OEM part? And he said, oh, it's an aftermarket part. And I said, meaning that it's an older part that's been rebuilt and repurposed? And he said, yes. I said, my husband would want a brand new part, please. So understanding that OEM makes the mechanic sound like he knows a lot more than I do, um, but then cutting through that and saying, no, I don't understand that word. I don't understand that vocabulary. 
my kids, our kids, are currently quarantined, but they are on a rowing crew where they get in those long skinny boats and they paddle themselves across the water. Well, when the coach said there are a few regattas scheduled for this season, I had to say, I'm sorry, I don't have the same vocabulary. What is a regatta? And so teaching our kids to understand and master the vocabulary of what it is they're learning and then to package that vocabulary in a way that their audience will understand is secret sauce for teaching our kids communication. Now, I just had a conversation with my 14-year-old, and I'm just going to tell you right now, this kid uh, was saved for last by God <laughs> because there needed to be six of us to watch him to make sure that he survived the whole childhood thing. Um, but packaged in his very busy, energetic body was someone that was not ready to read until he was 10. And that's okay. We read to him and we filled his mind with story and imagination and curiosity. And by the time he read, the light bulb went off. Sorry, my phone's shaky. The light bulb went off and he went from not reading at all to reading full chapter books overnight. The kid has the highest reading comprehension in the house and is the most creative writing person in the house, which is truly an accomplishment in the sailor household. And I was looking at him this morning and I said, you know, we were going through English. What have you done for English? And where are you right now in English? And I told him, I said, kiddo, I want you to understand something that you are, you're nailing the, this whole English thing. You understand that writing is about understanding your audience and delivering vocabulary. And then I paused. What level of communication? What is the age target that you're communicating for? And he said, 13. And I said, why? He said, because most people speak at a 13-year-old vocabulary. I said, exactly. I said, can you identify for you personally any holes in your communication? And he goes, no, not really, not really. And then he cracked a smile and he goes, well, maybe enunciation. I said, exactly. For you, enunciating your words clearly helps you communicate clearly to your audience, correct? And he said, yes. And I said, are you an awesome speller? He said, nope. I said, but can I tell you what you are a master at? And he goes, yes, please. And I said, you are a master of communicating on paper and using the tools available to you so that you look like a master speller. I said, dude, and I, we gave it like a little fist bump thing. And he was all like, he came and gave me a hug at that point. And I said, dude, you may not be an excellent speller, but you are a master tool user. You know how to use a thesaurus. You know how to identify misspelled words. And if you personally can just nail your enunciation, then you can write as though you are a scholar. And then you will be able to communicate to any audience out there because your words will be clearly understood. Mama, grandma, friend, family, when you teach your kids to write, when you teach them to deliver a speech or to share their ideas, help them understand the purpose behind that piece of communication. It's not to master the five paragraph essay. It's not to write a sentence with all the parts and pieces in the proper place. It's not to write beautiful, eloquent sonnets, Shakespearean style. It's not even to argue some kind of thing for your thesis statement. It is the ability to clearly communicate your thoughts, ideas, and creativity to an audience in a way that they clearly understand you. This does not happen overnight. It is a lifelong journey. So if your kids are 10 and under and they can't spell and they can't read and they can't um, write all this stuff, don't worry about it. Just keep marinating their hearts with story. They need to fall in love with story because the, the secret of excellent communication is to wrap an idea or a thought in a story. Hey, if it was good enough for Jesus, 
If it was good, most of the Bible is written in a story. If it was good enough for him, it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me, and it's good enough for our kids. We don't get captivated by people that are saying, here's the 12 steps to um, make a quilt. Instead, you get captivated by the story of them injuring both of their wrists simultaneously while trying to sew too much at a time, right? It's the story that pulls you in. So anyway, that's my random thought for today. We are all surrounded by our children, and it is our responsibility to teach them to communicate clearly. I'm telling you right now, it does not matter if your kids are master spellers. What matters is that they know how to find the tools to help them spell correctly on paper. That's really the secret sauce. <laughs> this is not 1914. This is 2020, where you can say, hey Siri, how do you spell phantasmagoric? And then Siri, if she likes you, now Siri hates me. Oh my gosh, does that thing lie? to me like, if I hate her, I hate Siri. But our kids will ask Siri, hey, how do you spell? And then Siri will comply. What Siri can't do for your kids, what I can't do for your kids, what you can't do for your kids is to take their place in a job interview, to take their place in front of a screen when they are presenting an idea to a colleague via a video conference. But what we can do is we can equip our kids with solid communication skills. I'm telling you, if you understand who you're speaking to, and you understand that if you use lofty language, like phantasmagoric, which is really super cool, um, if you use big words or industry-specific words and you define them, then you can bring your audience along on any journey. You can teach them anything. You can entertain them as much as you want. You can equip them with skills that they don't have because you've captivated their attention. This is so important. This trumps being able to spell, being able to um, define vocabulary on paper, even being able to write an excellent essay. That essay has no purpose if the end result isn't to clearly communicate their idea about something or to entertain an audience about something that happened in their life. So teach your kids to communicate. Help them understand who their audience is and help them understand that each different audience will require a different spin. So you can write a story, the same story, for a four-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 49-year-old but you would use different language. You would package it differently. It would have different lengths. Does this all make sense? So anyway, go teach your kids to communicate. You have captive audiences. Hide the papers, hide the worksheets, fill their heads with story, and start working on things like projecting their voice so they can be clearly heard. Boy, do I have a whisperer in the house. He's actually banned from whispering because his normal voice is so quiet that we're always saying, huh? What'd you say? So he's not allowed to whisper. So projecting your voice and speaking clearly, um, implying the do-over. Hey, rewind that sentence and say it clearly. Um, these are the important skills, okay? So anyway, that's it. I gotta go teach. I have hope, hope, hope. You have a wonderful day and I will see you later.